Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today, let's make a geode shirt, but let's do a different twist on it. As usual, the shirt was washed and dried, soaked in a soda ash solution for 20 to 30 minutes. I wrung it out of my panda spin dryer so it's just barely damp. I've also turned the shirt inside out. So the different twist that I'm gonna do on this geode is instead of making a center area like most geodes have, this is just gonna have the rings of the geode without that center area. I'm starting by grabbing one corner of the hem of the shirt and I'm gonna lift the shirt up off of the table and shake it out just a little bit so that it falls nicely. I initially grabbed the shoulder of the shirt and was gonna start there, but I decided to start on the hem instead. Then I'm gonna lay the shirt down on the table and go all the way to the very end, which in this case is the end of one of the sleeves. And that's where I'm gonna start tying. I'm gonna tie the way I normally do a regular geode, varying the amount of lines that I put in the geode and the distance between each of the lines. I'm gonna make some of the lines closer together and some of them further apart. Remember with a geode, if the shirt is a little bit messy, that's what actually makes a better looking geode. It doesn't make it look quite as perfect. So if you see all this big crumpled up area right in the middle, I don't wanna straighten it out. I wanna go ahead and tie it with it kind of in this wrinkled mess. Every now and then I'm gonna readjust and shake out the shirt just to make sure it doesn't get to look too uniform and perfect. Then to get better color saturation in the middle of the geode, I'm gonna go ahead and set the shirt aside and allow it to dry out for a couple of days. I'm gonna ice dye this shirt on a rack, but in order to keep the ice and the dye on the shirt, I need to make myself an ice barrier. So for that, I'm gonna use some silicone cake molds. I purchased these from Amazon and I'll leave a link down below in the description for where to get them. I'm wrapping the silicone cake molds around my shirt, then I'm gonna use some wooden clothespins and attach those to the metal rack to hold the cake molds right up next to the shirt. I've used these clothespins quite a few times, that's why they're all stained with dye. But that's what makes this setup really nice, is it's reusable. After I'm finished washing out the shirt, I just put the silicone cake molds and the wooden clothespins in my sink and wash them with some soap and water. Then rinse them really well and allow them to dry. So there are several different ways that you can apply the dye to a geode. You can either randomly apply the dye to each one of the sections, or use a specific color pattern and apply dye to each of the sections, or you can just randomly sprinkle the dye over the entire shirt, not really paying much attention to the different sections of the geode. I'm gonna randomly apply the colors, but I'm gonna apply them to each one of the sections. And I personally like to apply the dye under the ice so that I have a little bit more control over where the dye goes. If you're applying the dye over the ice to a geode, that's perfectly fine too. That's another way to apply the dye. However, because the ice will cover up your sinew lines, it's gonna be a little bit more of a random dye application. Either way is perfectly fine though, it just depends on the look you're going for on this shirt. I'm starting by applying hydrangea from Dharma Trading Company, and I'm just going to choose random spaces or areas down the shirt where I'd like to apply the hydrangea. 
I don't want to be too uniform in choosing the sections to apply the dye to. I want it to be as random and natural as possible. I'm going to repeat this process with the remaining colors. The next color is Imperial Purple from Dharma. Next, I'm using Mist Gray from Dharma Trading Company. Dharma's Ultraviolet. Brushed Steel from Dharma Trading Company. And the final color that I'm using is Wisteria from Pro Chemical and Dye. I'm going to add an additional sprinkle of soda ash over the top of the dye, just to make sure that as the ice melts and runs through the shirt, I still have plenty of soda ash to react with the dye. Now I'm going to add the ice on top of the shirt and put the shirt aside to allow the ice to melt. After the first layer of ice melted, I came back and checked the shirt and there was still quite a bit of undissolved dye sitting on each of the sections. So I added an additional layer of ice to the top. After the second layer of ice melted, I came back and checked the shirt and almost all of the dye had dissolved and gone through the shirt. There was a little bit left sitting on top, but when I checked the back side of the shirt, the dye had come through to the back side, so I just left the shirt alone and allowed it to process. I let it process or batch for probably about 24 to 36 hours. Then I took the shirt to my utility sink and I began rinsing it in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. I untied the shirt and gradually warmed the water up to hot to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the shirt. If you notice that you still have quite a bit of dye coming out of your shirt after you've been rinsing for a while, you can go ahead and soak your shirt in some hot water. To do this, I add hot water to my sink and I put a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent into the water. This will help keep any of the dye that is soaked out of the shirt from redepositing onto the shirt. Then I soak the shirt until the water cools off. After the water cools off, I change it out and continue that soaking process until the water is almost clear. I did that with this shirt, and then when the water was almost clear, I put it into my washing machine along with a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent, and I washed it on a hot water cycle. After the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. So what do you guys think? I really love the shirt. I love the way it turned out. I like the fact that it doesn't have a center, so I think that makes it a little bit different than some of the other geodes I've done. And I also like all the diagonal lines on the shirt too. I think that's going to be very flattering to wear. On this shirt, I think it either looks like purple waves or tides or sand. I think it looks really cool. I like that. I also love an ice dye because I like the fact that the colors are not uniform throughout the shirt. Not only do the purples give lots of color splits with the pink shades and the blue shades, but then the different grays that I put on the shirt give color splits with more of like a green tinge and some other different color shades in there. I think that always makes it look interesting. And then because it's ice dyed, the colors aren't uniform. So it's not one solid band of color. If you'll look at each band of color in the shirt, there are varying shades of that color. So there are lighter spaces and darker spaces and I really like that look. I think it makes it look more natural and interesting. 
I have a lot of people ask, can they make a geode with liquid dye? And the answer is absolutely yes, you can. But it's not going to give the same effect as an ice dye geode. You won't get quite as many color variations and you won't get the color splits that you get with ice dye. It'll still look cool, but it'll be a more uniform coloring across the shirt. So overall, I love the way the shirt turned out. But what do you guys think? Drop me a comment down below and let me know what your opinion is of this shirt. Do you like the look of a geode without really having the center part of a geode? Or do you prefer the center of a geode and it to look a little more traditional? And if you've enjoyed this video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.